We learn. We keep our mouths shut and we learn. Doing it all the time. Doing it constantly. Coaches get coached. Mentors have mentors. Constant development. You think you know it all. You, you don't You don't know anything at all. You have no idea of what you don't know until you put yourself in a situation to learn and grow. And this applies to every business and industry out there. Constantly learning. Constantly growing. 15 years ago, man, I thought I knew everything. Dumb as hell. I'm still an idiot. 45 years old. I'm just getting started. I'm just learning for real. I think this is going to be my best year yet. I'm going to go even harder on personal development this year than I've ever done. I didn't focus on personal development for myself. Well, it was super fire. It was a really cool intro for the the video portion of this. Welcome everybody to the Big Dog Podcast. I'm your host, Josh Wilson. With my son, Logan. What's shaking, baby? Not much. How are things at home? Good. Everyone's sick, but besides that, good. I'm glad I got out of there before everybody fell out. Yeah. Look at you. Well, I don't know about that. I feel terrible. (laughs) Feel terrible that everybody feels terrible. Yeah. Um, missed y'all yesterday on my birthday. Yeah. We, we had a, um, it would have been a sad birthday though, if you were here. So. Yeah. I think yeah. next week we just need to do a redo of mommy and Maya's birthday. All right. You know what I mean? Like just do a redo. Let's pretend Monday's mom's birthday. We'll pretend next Wednesday's my birthday. Everybody will be feeling better. I'll be better. Like everything's just good. Everything's yeah. just good. But the girls are doing okay. You holding them down, giving them their meds. Yeah. They're just yeah, that's awesome. Whew. Sucks. I, I got to go pick up mom's uh, medicine later because they still, it's on hold. They said, I don't, I don't pick up medicine a lot, but I don't know what that means because I feel like it's still there, but it's on hold. Yeah, if, they're, if they're holding it. Yeah. That would I mean they would. I went last night to pick it up and they said that I couldn't get it because it's it's on hold and like maybe I'm just dumb and don't know what this means. So I'm like, if you have it there, mom said it was because they were closing in like a couple of minutes and they just didn't feel like doing the paperwork at that time. So Uh, that could be it. Go back this morning. All right. Well, hopefully they will be feeling better very soon. It's crazy, man. A lot of people are sick. Flu's going around like crazy. Yeah. People aren't feeling yeah, great. His roommate might have it. The flu. Yeah. Same symptoms. That sucks. But. Sucks. See, when I think of flu, I think of like tummy trouble, nausea, puking. Mm. We don't have any of that in the house, do we? Don't think so. No. Nope. <laughs> Man, that's the worst. It's been a long time since I've been sick like that. A long time. I'm the worst. I'm not a good sick person. I become a big baby. Yeah, but you don't get sick a lot. It's just when you do. Yeah. Pretty pathetic. Pretty pathetic. But anyway, um, out in Dallas for meetings this week. And um, we got the head trainers out here. Katie's out here. So it's, it's good. We'll have Apex stuff. And then we'll have our Team JW meetings this weekend and then and fly home. But it's cool having everybody out. Um, everybody trickled in yesterday and we went to dinner last night, Logan, for my birthday. And we were, I was really excited. We were just going to go hang out at the um, Cowboys club for dinner, which is going to be a great time. And we were there and Katie's like, um, finish your drink. We're leaving. And I'm like, what do you mean? We're leaving. She goes, the car's downstairs. We're leaving. I'm like, oh, a surprise. I'm like, all right, let's go. So um, we we go downstairs, get in the car. We just start driving. We end up downtown, and they surprise me with dinner at this place called Crown Block. Crown Block. And it's at the very top of the huge tower in downtown Dallas. I think it's called reunion tower or something like that. And, um, it's really, really crazy how this thing is set up. 
And so you go up in the top, you're in the sphere. It's all glass all the way around. And I mean, you can see all of North Texas from the restaurant, but it's cool. Cause you're looking out and you can see like, uh, you know, the downtown, it's all lit up and Katie, Larry, you know, Alex and, and Katie Smith, they all treated me to a really exceptional dinner, incredible experience. We had a blast, a lot of fun. And then, you know, we're all up and working and rolling today. So, but it was a lot of fun. I'm tough to surprise. It is rare that anyone surprises me and they, they got me. They surprised me. Really great experience. Really a lot of fun. The big four or five. I don't know if that's like a thing, you know, 45 years old. Uh, I feel good. Feel real good. And um, yeah, it's a great experience. Had a pretty good birthday. Missed you guys. Missed mom. Missed you guys. But um, I am glad that I was gone with everybody being sick. Not that I wouldn't want to care for y'all but I'm not trying to get sick like that. So I know your mom was glad too that, that I was out. So the crew spoiled me and it was a, a pretty, pretty good day, but I do think we should redo it all next week and, you know, run it back and, and see what happens. So been out here, been doing calls, different meetings, talking with coaching clients and, you know, a, a big thing that's been coming up a good amount lately um, different people I deal with and, and clients in particular is just staffing issues. And for years it was hard to staff and it, it's still hard to hire. Um, but, you know, people running into issues um, with a lot of people just having some moral and, you know, kind of character failures that aren't in alignment with, you know, their organization's core values and kind of trying to, to navigate, you know, what do I do in this situation? And, you know, I always come back to, we've talked on the show a couple of times about core values and their importance, and they kind of give you that, that good roadmap. And it's kind of your playbook also, you know, I know if our core values are X, Y, and Z, if someone isn't abiding by those core values, well, there needs to be some course correction. Um, and that's whether it's an employee, that's whether it's, you know, a high level executive team member, me, you know, as the, the leader of the business who set the core values. Like if I'm out of alignment, I get called out and, you know, adjustments need to be made. And so hard when you don't know what your values are. And I think that's the biggest lesson in all of this. If you don't know what your values are, it's hard to hold people accountable to, to anything. Most of the people I've been talking to, you know, they have implemented their core values and what they're about over the last year or so, or they had them set in place even before that. And so it's not really a question of what do I do or what should I do? Your core values tell you exactly what you need to do. It's very, very black and white. Your core values are your policy for staff. Your core values are your North Star on where you should be headed and what fits and what doesn't fit. And the thing is, when people got to go, if they're not willing to make the adjustments to be in alignment with the core values, it doesn't have to be a dramatic shift. It doesn't have to be chaos. It doesn't have to be rumor mill central. It doesn't have to be endless chatter. People leave jobs all the time. People quit all the time. People get fired all the time. People get asked to leave all the time. People get laid off all the time. And the thing that's bothersome to me is if typically, at least in my experience, when people are gone, they left. If they left on their own accord, they left because accountability started to come into play. And now all of a sudden there's all these problems with the company or me or whoever their manager is. And, you know, they quit. Okay. Funny timing, how that was in alignment with accountability for their job and tasks. Then you've got the people who just get straight let go or fired. And that probably has to do with moral or character failure, policy failure, something that's so far out of alignment of core values that they can't possibly stick around. So when people typically when there's a transition, particularly a quick transition, it's not because everybody was doing everything right. And I know that's been the case in, in my businesses and I see it all the time in others. 
Drama isn't necessary, though, to follow. And when people get into the drama aspect of it, it's so incredibly frustrating because everybody has all these wild ass opinions, but they don't have any insight to actual the real happenings of of what took place. And you can't make assumptions on what happened between individuals or or organizations based on the emotions of someone that feels wronged. Because all we're hearing or seeing is their emotional interpretation of what happened. And that goes for all sides. And so people want to, you know, pick up the flag and carry it for somebody when they don't know a damn thing about what happened. And it's just so silly to me. It's so silly to me how ridiculous people can get um, during transitions. It's ridiculous to me how negative uh, people can get during transitions. And again, again, we see it in our own business. Um, it's like, Hey, we ran together for a while. We don't run together anymore. I wish you the best. I'm going to stay focused on me and our business and do us. You focus on you and do your thing. No one has to fail for me to win. You know, we, we're going to, we're going to do our own thing. There's, there's plenty of food out here for everybody. It doesn't have to turn negative. It doesn't have to turn silly. And that's the thing that, I would encourage people. It's like, man, you just look silly. You look silly. You look silly when you invite the drama in, you look super silly when you entertain it. And I know over the years we've seen people leave and get pissed off or whatever. And, you know, go on social media and post stuff and people start chiming in. And most of the time they end up removing stuff. They end up deleting, you know, posts they'll put on social media because when cooler heads prevail, they realize, "Mm." that was maybe not a a good look that might not be great. So I would challenge you, you know, when transitions are taking place in your life, you know, how are you handling it? What are you doing? Whether you feel wronged or not, how are you handling it? Cause at the end of the day, how the words you say, the actions you take, the things you type, the things you share, they reflect on you more than they do the person you're probably trying to hurt or harm. And so always take a second and breathe. That same thing can be applied to a lot of people, you know, who who are just reactive in general. And I'm a very reactive person. I have one client I have a call next week with, and I'm going to tell them, you know, hey, look, before you text or email me, can you just like take 24 hours and and sit on it? Because a lot of times when they do this, and I love these people, they're great, great, great people, buddy. But like, (laughs) if a lot of times they'll get very anxious or excited about something, nervous about something, stressed out about something. That's absolutely nothing. It's a non-issue completely. So I'm like, how about we take 24 hours and just think about it or don't think about it. Let's see what the next 24 hour brings. And does this even matter tomorrow? And I think what you find out is most things don't matter. Nick, he he's told me for probably gosh, the last two years, one thing he started implementing was after I think 7 p.m. and during the week and on the weekends, like if it's not an emergency, he's not responding, dealing with it, entertaining it. And people just texting it all hours of the day and night and emailing like, oh my gosh, this is going on or whatever. And when he started putting those limitations in place, or I wouldn't say limitations, I would say boundaries, healthy boundaries in place, people's emergencies suddenly became not such a big deal after all, or it was something they were able to figure out on their own. And so not everything had to be brought to him in an emergent manner. And he felt like he had to respond and take care of, you know, right away, they could handle things themselves. Or oddly enough, it didn't have to be talked about at 915 at night on a Friday, it could wait till Monday, because not an emergency. Because your emergency isn't necessarily someone else's. Your heartbreak, your offense, your annoyance isn't necessarily someone else's. Your drama, your theatrics, your poor response to something you feel negative isn't necessarily someone else's. 
So just take a second and chill with it. 24 hours, still fired up, still feel a certain way, whatever. Do, do something with it. Odds are you're not. You're not going to feel that way. And if you're the type of person that feeds into other people's chaos and you're the person that's got to pick up the flag and run with it for everybody because, you know, you feel like someone's a victim and, and you just have to go and fix their problem. You, you carry the offense of every person who says they're offended. You've got to chill the hell out. My God, I, I see and hear more people crying and complaining about injustices and offenses to things that don't impact them at all. They're more worried about it than people supposedly offended. Relax, Nancy. Calm down, Karen. Take a breath, Chad. Chill for a bit. Damn, is that what you want to spend your time doing, you know, with your life? Like, just take a second and chill. If you're all fired up and upset and bothered, and you're going to you need to write it out because you need to tell the world about your offense, write that sucker out. Write it out. Then delete it and move on. Handle your business. Do what you need to do. Throw it in the fire pit. Flush it down the toilet. Delete the note on your phone and move on and handle your business. When you get all emotional about this stuff, when it's just business and you either chose to move on or or your employer chose to move you on, move on. Playing victim, crying foul, whatever. I mean, and some things are legitimate. Don't get me wrong. But most of the time, the crap we see, it really negatively impacts relationships. Because people aren't interested in seeing this stuff. And it sucks because there's people that you think were mature and dialed in and on point. Now you're like, shit, I don't really like how that response went down. But then you wait. And it's like, okay, did they realize that was silly? They kind of change their response, their behavior. Did they backtrack a little bit? All right. It was an emotional moment. I get it. Or years later, are we still whining and crying about the same offense? Move on. Focus on you. Focus on your family. Focus on your business. It's always hysterical to me. We'll have trainers move on. And we've had several trainers move on and do their own thing. And they came to me about it. We talked. We helped them get started. You know, I'll still mentor them and coach them, answer the phone. They call. They need something. A handful have done it the right way. Most just dip out because, you know, they were probably getting held accountable or fired or whatever. But the amount of times my name or our company name comes out of their mouth or is a topic of conversation it's hysterical to me. It's hysterical to me. I'm like, why? Just don't worry about us. Don't worry about me. I'm not worried about you. I want you to win, but you're never going to win if you don't get focused on yourself and your business and your own people. You keep focusing on me. You're just chasing. You're just chasing. Shit. Right now I'm helping you. I'm telling you, hey, you should think about approaching things a little bit differently. I was talking to one of my head trainers the other day and Larry, and he goes, man, I really want to repair the relationships of the dog training community, you know, in our area. He goes, he said, he goes, everybody hates each other. And then he corrects it. He goes, no, it's not that everybody hates each other. Most people just hate us and hate you, Josh. And I laugh. They don't hate me. and They they don't hate off leash. I think that they hate that they don't know how to, Ooh, I want to say this the right way. I think they hate that maybe they don't know how to have the same level of impact. And that comes out as, hate or negativity towards something else. So there's plenty of time and opportunity for people to be successful, but they won't be until they drop the drama and theatrics and focus on themselves and what they need to do to grow. You know, we're constantly challenging ourselves to grow. We're out here with the team this week who were taking time away from our schedules to grow, to learn, to develop, to get in rooms with people that we can add value to and they can add value to us. Their businesses are at a place where we want our businesses to grow to and be. They lead their teams in a style of which we would like to lead our teams and be. So we go and learn. We learn. We keep our mouths shut and we learn. Doing it all the time. Doing it constantly. Coaches get coached. Mentors have mentors. Constant development. You think you know it all. You, you don't You don't know anything at all. You have no idea of what you don't know until you put yourself in a situation to learn and grow. And this applies to every business and industry out there. Constantly learning, constantly growing. 15 years ago, man, I thought I knew everything. Dumb as hell. I'm still an idiot. 45 years old. I'm just getting started. I'm just learning for real. I think this is going to be my best year yet. I'm going to go even harder on personal development this year than I've ever done. I didn't focus on personal development for myself until the year 2000. First 41 years of my life, I'm just winging it like a dumbass. Win some, lose some, win some, lose some, win some, lose some. Just am who I am. You know, I learn, but I don't know that I'm getting any better. Year 2000, I finally start investing in me growing as a person. Guess what? 
still screwing stuff up, still messing up, still failing. The good thing is, though, the wins are bigger. The lessons learned are bigger. The relationships, I believe, are 100% better. And I think it's a direct reflection of investing in myself. And I'm sorry for those watching this on video. The sun is is moving and I've got this weird glare coming across my face. What do you think of that, Logan? Nice. Pretty good look, huh? Yeah. All right. Really uh, captures the darkness of your beard. Oh, yeah. That's simpler. Simpler. We're waiting for the email, baby. Hit us up. <laughs> We're glad to, you know, take some sponsorship here. Look, when I get back this week, I need to to do it again. You can see the gray on the top line. See it? Mm -hmm. Where it's growing out? Yeah. It's rough. It's tough being this age. Yours is looking good, though. Yours is coming in. Thanks. Yeah. Full. Full face. Nice. Yeah, looks really nice. But the thing is, you know, it's, it's that self-development piece. And when you start focusing more and it's not selfish, like it's not selfish. We should all want to grow. We should all, <laughs> we should all understand that we're not limited by what we believe our limits are. We're limited by what we're limited by what we know. I used to think I would dream big. I used to think that I had really lofty goals and aspirations. I re really used to believe I was a hard charger. Then I got exposed to some stuff and I saw some things and it opened my eyes to like, Oh shit, there's really additional levels to this. And not just business, not just family, life. There's so many different levels. There's so many different experiences. There's so many opportunities out there. But are you ready for it? Do you deserve it? Have you put yourself in a place of development to earn it? I don't think I was before. I think I'm getting better now and I'm growing. And there's opportunities for you guys to do that too. So it'll be a lot of fun. One thing that we're, um, we're doing, and this is a totally new thing, but it was an experience that, that Devin and I got to share with some people a couple of years ago, and it was tremendously impactful. And we started talking about what if we created a similar experience for people as well and, and offered it up. And so we're, we're actually going to be hosting a leadership and couples retreat in the spring in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. And I'm really excited about it. To me, a small group, you know, not, not huge numbers. I want it to be small. I want it to be fun. It's gonna be a great networking opportunity with other business leaders and their significant others. And it should be a really, really great time. And so we're, we, I'm a little nervous. I'm not a little nervous. I'm actually very, very nervous to be hosting it, but we're there as attendees as well to learn and be poured into, you know, by other couples and business leaders, you know, in various industries. So we'll be active participants in the, the retreat and the breakout sessions, not just spewing information. Like I think I know everything I'm creating a, I'm creating an opportunity for people to come together and enjoy a common experience and learn and grow, not just professionally and in their businesses, but also in their relationships. And, you know, Devin and I, we've been together, shit, coming up on 30 years we've been together, which is insanity to me. But, you know, we started dating at 16 and we've grown together and all the different variations of each other over the years. You know, she still chooses me and I still choose her. And, you know, we've been through a lot and seen a lot and we've got some perspective to share, but I'm so excited to learn from others as well. So if it's something that you might be interested in, if you're listening and you're like, oh, Josh, can I get some more information about that? You know, you can email us at mastermind at teamjw.com or, you know, comment on one of the posts where this is. And we can, we'll also drop a link in the show notes for it. So you can get more information about it and see if it's something that, that interests you. We've already got several spots booked. And like I said, it's not open to a ton of people just because I do want it to be a, an intimate, you know, group that, you know, is going to be able to work together and learn from each other. And you get too many people. It just, it, it's too much. Logistically, it's a nightmare. And so we're not, we're not interested in that. You know, even if I could get 50 couples to come. I'm not interested in 50 couples coming. We're trying to keep it to like six to 10 uh, couples. So it'll be a lot of fun and it's going to be a great time and the weather's going to be beautiful. And we're, we're looking forward to doing that. So again, we're, we're looking for opportunities to get into rooms to learn and grow. And I really want you to be doing that too. And to, to, to bring it full circle, when you're doing that, when you're putting yourself in rooms where you're challenged and you're learning and you're pouring into people and people are pouring into you and you're learning and growing from each other's shared experiences, what happens is 
you start deciphering and processing information and emotions in a totally different way. Things that bother you don't bother you anymore. Things you used to get riled up in and, 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 you know, pour gasoline on a fire on social media, on people's stuff, you know, just ridiculousness. You don't do that crap anymore because that's no value to your life. And if that type of bullshit does add value to your life, you really got to assess that situation because that is such a low standard. That is such low hanging fruit. When you got words about people, negative words about people, and you're in a group and that individual is not with you at the table, man, that's too easy. That's too easy. That's low hanging fruit, low level living, particularly when you don't speak of facts. Speak of facts. Around here, a thing we, we say is like, you got a problem. Talk to somebody about it who can actually do something about it. Anything else is gossip. And that was a lesson my pastor and good friend Stu Hodges taught me a long, long time ago. You know, you talking to a coworker about a problem you have with your manager beyond maybe, hey, do you think I should approach it, you know, with so-and-so? How would you approach this? Anything beyond that is gossip. Because if you're talking to somebody and just talking and bitching about something that was someone who can't provide a solution, who can't actually do anything about it. See, the thing is, you're interested in gossip. You're interested in, you know, pouring gasoline on something that that doesn't need to be as big of an issue as it is. You're just interested in running your mouth. You're not actually interested in a solution. That's low level life. That's low level living. Have the conversations with people who actually address it. Have the conversations with the problem solver. Have the conversation with the person you have the problem with. It's always the first thing I ask. Well, have you talked to that person? No. Well, how long is this going on? Oh man, like a year or two. Huh? And you never brought it up? You never talked about it? It's low level. It's low level. Put yourself in rooms where you can level up. If you don't got any rooms that you can get into to level up, create that room. Invite people in and be the leader. Let's grow together. Let's do better together. I want to be a better boss. I want to be a better leader. I want to be a better dad. I want to be a better husband. I want to be a better wife. I want to be a better partner. If there aren't rooms like that for you to get into that are easily accessible, create the damn room. Someone's got to. Every room that I get into, Someone at some point had to create it. Someone took a risk and said, hey, I think this might be a good idea. Maybe it's time for you to start a room and invite people in. Got to level up. Low level living is, ain't the way to be. Got to level up. How are you going to level up today? How are you going to level up tomorrow? Interested to hear your feedback. Interested to see your thoughts. Hit us up if you're interested in the Cabo trip. And we just appreciate you so much watching and sharing the show. If you wouldn't mind, leave some reviews, share the show. So more people can learn and hear and grow. If you feel like we're adding any value at all, you know, we'd really appreciate it. It's the best thing you can, you can do for us is, is share the show, leave a review, leave comments, share it with people. And that's a great, great thank you. If you feel like we're adding any value at all. So appreciate the feedback, appreciate the love. We'll catch you next time on the big dog podcast. 